welcome to this week's episode or this episode today <laughs> um, of the podcast. Yeah. Um, we are here. This is a very another special episode with a guest. Yeah. We had um, Natalie last week. Last week was our first video guest with yeah. a video. Yeah. And <laughs> today we have a guest. So Joseph, go ahead and introduce this guest. For today. Um, we got uh, my friend Dustin here. He is a filmmaker. He lives in Florida, correct? Still? Still, still in yes. Yeah. <laughs> Orlando. <laughs> Orlando. Very good. Um, but I've worked with him on a couple things. I bounced a lot of things off of him uh, a number of years back with project I worked on um, or projects I've worked on. And uh, yeah, he's been he's been kind of a co and also maybe a little bit of a mentor to me because uh, <laughs> you do have a bit more experience than I do when uh, we met. But um, but yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people watching and uh, anything interesting you would might like them to know about you. Yeah, uh, I'm Dustin Weibel. I'm a writer director here in Orlando, Florida. I work with a company called Living Frames. We're a production company here, mainly working on client work, but we're starting to branch out a little bit um, to do more narrative stuff, especially with our new project. Uh, it's a, my brainchild, uh, a monster in the house. Yeah. When you say um, client work, is that just like freelance or what type of freelance? So with this company, it's more just like a, if a business reaches out to us and wants a commercial done, something like that. We work mm -hmm. a lot with Disney. So oh, that's wow. always really cool. So like a lot of ride openings, that's fun to work because <laughs> yeah. you get to ride it like three days before everybody else. Um, Is that scary? <laughs> <laughs> not really. It's, it's really cool because um, a lot of like actors and movie stars go and write it first so they're the guinea pigs <laughs> have you got a chance to work with any any actors or movie stars doing work in that world uh not like that i had to edit them writing rides before which is really okay. fun so like you neil patrick the harris raw footage. yeah oh, i nice, got to see all the nice. all the craziness behind the scenes which is really nice <laughs> that's awesome dude that's really cool yeah. um it's is it the same company that you've worked for for how, how long have you worked for that company uh just over two years now Two, two years okay that's awesome that's awesome um so you mentioned a monster in the house mm. um we definitely want to get into that because that's something that's big happening in your world right now um what kind of uh what well, well you mentioned what well what kind of people are helping you out on the project is it people you work with is it people that you've met like what what's kind of the crew and everything that's behind this film that you're doing so it's actually a, like a big conglomeration of a ton of different things and a ton of different yeah. people so um a big thing i've been wanting to get into with this uh my job and introduce a lot of my coworkers to is making films and narrative mm -hmm. filmmaking cuz so much of our stuff is constantly just taking notes from clients and you know, it's not really the fun aspect of this. And um, yeah. I, I have the big passion for making actual films. Yeah. And so going into this, I knew it was something I wanted to bring a ton of different people in from different aspects of my life, from people I met in school to people I met in Ocala when I lived there for a couple of years to people that I know that still live here. Um, so it's actually a big mix of people from my work from people mm -hmm. that I knew from my old job, um, people that I went to school with, and then just bringing them all together because I wanted them to get to know each other for future projects so that when yeah. we go off and we're filming in uh, Phoenix for uh, a hospital that we work closely with, maybe we can call our friends in Texas that flew in for this. Yeah. Or, um, oh, we have um, a pretty big crew going on. We have a studio here in town. Uh, if we have a, a big shoot going on here, shoot, we have a really good crafty person that can bring all of his items now. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really cool to introduce everybody. And that was my main goal for assembling the crew. Yeah, you're kind of building a network mm -hmm. while also making a film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. That's that's really great. Um, so was this something that was kind of like, are you, are you essentially producing it? Or maybe a producer came to you and was like, hey, do you have a story you want to direct? Or what kind of, what what was the process of getting this, this thing started and off the ground you know so i do a lot of writing just whenever i have free yeah. time and definitely during uh you know the lockdown with covid 
yeah. a lot of free time and after you know the first two three weeks or so and you're just sitting around playing video games i was like i gotta <laughs> i gotta get productive man i yeah. gotta get productive <laughs> so there was uh this one script that i was working on uh before uh covid that i never finished and i, I knew that that's where i wanted to start i knew i could finish that off and so once I sat down and actually finished it, I sent it off to a couple of people and they were talking about, this is actually really cool. And I've been looking for a new project for a while now, something that I could create myself mm-hmm. um, because it's, it's just been too long. And once it gets too long, you start getting that like uh, creative depression. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> when you're just, I, I need something. And so immediately, because I knew that it was pretty solid and I knew it was something doable, I wanted to... Um, just get on it and not make any excuses and just try to get it done in a timely manner and put um, put goals forward for myself so that I don't back down. So mm. immediately coming out of um, out of lockdown, I set like a, a crowdfunding campaign up mm-hmm. and that made me uh, have to go through with it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I will say when I saw that thing, I was like, heck yes like he's, <laughs> he's doing another project that's awesome mm-hmm. and it it looked it looks well the way way it was presented i mean it was just so well shot it was humorous and it was uh it had an element of mystery and some just you know like wtf moments <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah i definitely i definitely i was excited when i saw it and i was like mm-hmm. i'm gonna go follow everything that he's made <laughs> with this stuff because i want to keep up with it um, dude that was just something we like I had a quick idea for it. I was like, let's just shoot it in the studio. Like, let's just hurry up and do it because we have to get something out. And then it turned out pretty good. Yeah. Good enough. Like Mike Flanagan, um, one of my uh, directors that I look uh, up to, he gave a good amount of money. He's the oh, guy he who did. did uh, yeah. He, uh, wow. he's, he's the director of Dr. Sleep and Oculus. Yeah. And, um, and you said you movies. mentioned him in the video. Yeah, I did. Cause you a did. lot of his uh, work is this family trauma, like, manifesting itself through horror and it was a yeah. big inspiration for a monster in the house so and he so, just did you like try to did you like tag them in it or something or did he just find it i've actually talked to him a couple times over twitter so i just like oh. sent it to him and i was like hey man thanks for the inspiration and then next thing i know 20 minutes later here's uh <laughs> here's a note and just, some money in my account <laughs> that's awesome dude that's yeah. sweet so um, I have a question because you talked about the psychology of the story and just the in-depth um, storyline without giving anything away because without without us watching it, is there anything personal when you're writing this story that you kind of, the psychology, like, I don't know, maybe something that happened to you in the past that you kind of just put in that there or anything that was personal with when you're writing it? There's nothing personal for me, but I know mm. there, there's some people very close to me that have gone through uh, similar uh, experiences with like an abusive okay. father. And mm. so I was taking from them and their experiences. Um, I studied psychology a lot in college, so I was able to yeah. draw a lot on that. But mainly um, I wanted to take my love for like Stephen King stories where most of his okay. uh, storylines are uh, childhood trauma and how you deal with that as you grow up. And I wanted to put my own spin on it and yeah. create a, I wouldn't say this is like a proof of concept, but it's a proof of execution that I can okay. make something like this of this scale. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was gonna ask, cause you you wrote it. Mm. Um, and you so you, you wrote it kind of, or you finished it, I guess during, during quarantine, you know? Um, and then you put out this video to start the funding did you had already, you mentioned you already had assembled a cast and crew at that time. And so did you feel more pressure to, to get to, for it actually to happen once you made that video or once you started assembling the cast and crew? So actually I didn't start assembling the cast and crew until after I started the Indiegogo campaign. Okay. Um, but I, I had, it was me, um, my coworker Tori and my yes. boss Josh. Uh, okay. We were like the three people that really knew about it and we knew that we were going to go through with it. And yeah. especially once the Kickstarter was out, um, I felt like I had to go through with it because then people started giving money, you know? <laughs> once once I start giving money, it's like, well, I have yeah. to do something with it. I can't just, you know, go buy me a new pair of jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People are like, I'm like, where's the movie? You know, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yeah. Like, it didn't yeah. work out, guys. I had bills to pay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, 
I saw, I've been wa- seeing some of the photos you're posting from on set. Um, are you guys working with a red camera? Two. Two? Do you, is that something that you um, you have through work or someone that you know has it or maybe you have it? Like, how, how'd you get yourself on, how'd you get your hands on some red cameras? In our building, in our studio, there's three different production companies. It's mm-hmm. Living Frames, which is our production company, KP Media, which is uh, our friend Carl's production company, and uh, Chroma Images, which is our friend Matt's production company. And together, okay. there's so much equipment that they're so gracious to allow me to use. <laughs> yeah. Um, like we have, yeah, we have uh, not only those two reds, but we have 10 other cameras. We have who knows how many tripods and grip equipment. We have a whole grip truck uh, filled wow. with whatever we needed. So we yeah. are l- super lucky to have <sighs> hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. That's so cool, man. And just got to use it because it was there. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, did you, uh, did you, um, so did you, I'm trying to think of how I'm gonna say this. Did you pretty much just have to go and ask for that? Or was that something that you're like, hey, I'll, I'll like rent it or something? Like how, how was that whole process? Like getting access to it? Was it literally just them allowing you to use it because they know you and they know you, you know, mm. they well, trust you? Definitely, uh, it was a trust thing going in, like when I first started, but I've been there for two, two and a half years now. Yeah. So I've worked with them on so much and they've worked with me on so much that it's just like, yeah, whatever you need, man, just grab it out there. Like they're all in set with me, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, um, yeah. So it, it's, it's really nice to have that collaboration going on and that trust because I could not have done it without any of their help. It was seriously like the nicest thing. Like who yeah. packs up their big van full of like so much equipment and just allows some you know kid to <laughs> go, go make a passion project <laughs> well someone who believes in a in yeah. someone who's proven himself to be a good director that's what i would say um and you've definitely i've seen your projects and i've worked with you you got a skill especially when it comes to cinematography i mean you're thinking and you're thinking very clear well you're you're thinking in very creative styles and you're not one to like rush a job you know mm-hmm. what i mean um maybe you should um elaborate just for me because i don't know and for our audience how how do you know each other i mean what projects have you worked on in the past together i mean i i've not been a part because i've yeah. joined wiseworks kind of after mm-hmm. and he's helped you was it and i'm just curious was this uh faith song yeah yeah we well we met each other during the during faith song there was just a just an older project um we won't stick too much on that (laughs) but um but we'll uh we'll i mean i've i've because we formed that that friendship and relationship as um indie filmmakers at that time we lived in the same city um i we worked on like a short star wars fan film together we did uh for I think Path to Crimson. I think it was Path to Crimson, maybe the hike. I might have had bounced the idea off of you. Um, I probably asked you to come help out with it, but you were probably busy. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I thought it was about the time um, we were down here just moving, I think. Yes, you yes. Path to Crimson. Yeah, you were. Because so you, you moved pretty shortly after you got married. So you yeah. guys met in Columbia, South Carolina. Yes. Um, so... And pretty much since then, it's just kind of been, I mean, you filmed, you did a video for my wedding, which was mm-hmm. awesome. I mean, well, we you. watched it like, I don't know, maybe like a month and a half ago. And we're like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, okay, I got to say this real quick and won't make a lot of sense for the audience, but you know, you chose to put a shot in there that was almost, almost completely out of context. It was kind of just thrown in there because the, the, venue was so beautiful but it was like this close-up shot of this statue mm-hmm. and i don't know if you remember it yeah i remember but i was like he chose to put that in because i don't know the depth of field the statue the textures <laughs> everything just looks beautiful man and i was so happy to see that i was like it's unnecessary but it's wonderful it's perfect <laughs> but that that's the kind of thing that you think of when you're directing a film uh, and uh, on top of that is also the depth of the story and the characters um is there any interesting stories? Uh, first off, let me ask you: Are you guys wrapped with the film? Uh, principal, uh, principal photography is wrapped. Yes. 
Okay, we had, uh, awesome. Four days, so you're... four days over the course. So we did uh, last Sunday through Wednesday, and okay. ended up being uh, I think it was like sixty five hours of filming. It was wow. insane. Wow. Like, Can I ask you how many scenes are in the film? Sixteen. Sixteen. So what what were you shooting? You're shooting like three, four scenes a day. Three or four. Yeah. Wow. I'm trying. Man, I'm not I'm not bold enough. I I'm like I'm gonna shoot two scenes in one day. <laughs> Dude, that's the way to do it though. Because yeah. honestly, um, I was thinking, I was like, yeah, we can do this because I'm so used to filming kind of more run and gun uh, yes. with um, with like uh, C300s or uh, yeah. Sony FS7s where they're not not so much as put into them as Red is. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't account for that whenever I was scheduling things out. And then suddenly we're working 20 hour days and we're yeah. getting like four or five hours of sleep before getting up and doing it all over again. Oh and man, it, was it back to back? Back to back. Oh wow. It was hard, it was rough. I, I lost two pounds <laughs> just from like forgetting to eat. It was insane. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. I'm surprised people weren't just walking off set, but they said they had fun. So I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> hope that's true. <laughs> I think you, I think people would be surprised it, as long as the person in charge is smiling and doesn't mm -hmm. lose their temper, how you can actually have a good time even if you are exhausted. You Dude, know the I mean? crew like had every right to be angry and nobody snapped. <laughs> Everybody was so happy the whole time. Like, yeah, we're getting tired, but it was like, it was a blast, man. It was yeah. insane. Especially if you're doing something awesome and creative. I mean, that, that'll keep the wind in your sails quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You said you're done filming now. Mm -hmm. um, what are so you're editing it who's editing it are are you helping out is someone editing it for you or and then past editing it can you go into elaborate what's the plan for, for like releasing it yeah like are you, what, what are your hopes for it when it's yeah. done are you going to maybe i don't know how like film festival film festival are you going to release it yourself try to get more people to watch it to pay for or it or maybe just have your famous friends just tweet it out <laughs> just be, it's, i hope man i hope that's yeah. the case um, i mean i will sure <laughs> but I, so <laughs> for sure um i'm editing it i'll okay. be working on like audio and everything coloring it um i wanted to get like another colorist i wanted to get somebody to work on audio but the budget just got away from us so fast yes um especially once you're renting you know this historic house that was Oh, yeah. A quarter of our budget. And then the monster ended up being like a quarter of our budget. And then the actors were the other quarter. And then when you add in like food and mm -hmm. props, and then suddenly it's gone, man. Yeah. So um, I'll be taking care of the rest of that. If there's any more filming, I feel like we can cheat it in our studio mm -hmm. just for any insert shots and stuff. Um, so I'm hoping it'll be finished by the end of the year. I'm sure it will be. Very cool. Um, okay. But that's the goal is to have it ready by like around December. Um, the goal is, yes, Mike Flanagan gave some money, so I'm hoping he'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I gave money to something, I'd at least watch it. Yeah, but like but, film um, festivals and stuff, you think you'll do there, you'll add it, you'll submit it there? So it's really funny. Um, do you know the Crimson Screen Horror Film Festival in Charleston? I've heard of it. I haven't been a part of it at all. So Arrhythmia, my old short film, was in it. And okay. I am obsessed with the trophies. Um, <laughs> they're um, designed by the the creator of the Annabelle doll. Okay. And so they're like hand painted like fists that hold a knife. Oh wow! And it looks so cool. And honestly, my goal is to just get one of those. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's my goal. Like, of course, I'm going to send it off to other festivals. But if I get one of those, I'm going. to uh, Yeah, that's it. Yeah, man. just for, just put that on a shelf, and that's yeah. great. <laughs> I mean, that's perfect. Um, I wanted to ask you a question, but I'm gonna ask you first. Uh, can you tell people, maybe explain why you're into the, the horror genre? Cause I've seen that's, that's like your go-to storyline thing. Is it something mm -hmm. you've always been a fan of or is it just like, it's just your style? Like you just feel more creative in that environment. What, what's the, what, why do you, why are you drawn to that, that genre? You know, it's really funny because like when I was a little kid, I was terrified of horror. Like I couldn't watch scary mm -hmm. movies, mm -hmm. but I was always drawn to it and I didn't know why. And I think it has something to do with like, honestly, like where it starts with me and filmmaking is Jurassic Park. Uh -huh. And that's a horror movie. Yes. Just, and that's, I've, I've always been drawn to like that um, exhilarating feeling of just being in like terror, in trouble. Uh, without actually being in trouble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. And so 
I think a lot can come out of it. I think it's a very untapped genre. Just recently, um, with the releases of like a lot of A24 movies, like uh, let's say Babadook, The Witch, mm-hmm. um, yeah. there's been an elevation of horror that yes. wasn't there for a very, very long time before this. Um, just sporadically, maybe with like The Exorcist, uh, different mm-hmm. movies like that. But I feel like it's one of those genres that's still overlooked a lot within award seasons. Um, that a and lot can be horror was never blockbusters right not um, really and then uh, would you consider it a, a horror yeah for sure yeah. yeah and that that was like a pretty much a blockbuster you know it was a blockbuster a so, huge budget yeah exactly and that that was something that hasn't been seen until recently mm-hmm. so now the money's there so i'm sure like your interest combined with people are actually taking it a lot more seriously and dumping mm-hmm. a lot of money into it that's like great yeah. Um, well, you even mentioned, then, oh, go ahead. You mentioned like Stephen King being mm. a, a big inspiration. What would you say is one of your favorite stories from Stephen King that, like, just the Actually, one that you really like? <laughs> I really love it. Like, that's like one of my okay. favorite books. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's wildly different from the movies, but I still yeah. love the movies. Um, but it, I think, is my favorite. Mm-hmm. If I had to pick one, I actually really love his son, Joe Hill. Okay. I don't know if you know him. Um, he did like Nosferatu and um, I've, I've heard Hardship of that. Box I... and stuff. Yeah. Um, he's very much like his father where the horror is very present and it's very um, hardcore. Yeah. But um, he has a lot more heart that Stephen King kind of lacks, which is yes. nice. When, when you end on a, like a happier note, like a bittersweet uh-huh. even, it's it feels better. <laughs> it does. I mean, because it, it feels like you went along a journey, but it doesn't yeah. feel depressing at the end. Mm. I mean, I, I I don't know. Stranger Things wasn't really horror necessarily. It was more just thrilling. But even just like the element of having, you know, kids, maybe in like Steven Spielberg movies like Jaws and mm-hmm. stuff, it kind of felt like there was a resolution at the end. And although it was terrible, it they made it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, um, Steve, uh, Stranger Things was based on like Stephen King's novels and his feel and Steven Spielberg's novel, um, yeah. movies and feel like that's the reason that the Duffer brothers decided to make it in the first place was mm-hmm. because they wanted to make it and yeah. they were, they were told, um, you don't have any experience in this. And they're like, well, we'll just <laughs> make our own experience then. Yeah. Which they did. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you is, was there, is there any interesting or fun or maybe supernatural stories <laughs> that happened that that you you can pull from the production of the film or no anything supernatural that happened during well, the production well maybe not supernatural just fun or interesting or <laughs> compelling stories that happened during filming this oh man so the house itself was really cool um we looked for a long time to find the location and it's this 1908 house in lakeland florida it's about an hour away from where i am mm-hmm. um t- tons of history like it's paula dean's great uncle's house oh wow <laughs> yeah and like helen keller used to stay there when she was around these parts when she'd go visit like um florida state um yeah. there's tons of little things like that so we we're hoping hoping we would like see some sort of paranormal thing but nothing ever came <laughs> up um but there's actually a secret attic in the oh, house wow. That's cool. that we were wanting to go film in, but the owners wouldn't let us, but they've labeled it the forbidden layer above the door. And so, <laughs> Dude, there's something up in that attic, man. <laughs> something's up there. My DP actually, um, he was like, I should have brought my lock picking kit. And I could have gotten in there. <laughs> Dude, you might, have, you might release an evil spirit into the crew. And <laughs> Dude, we got the reds. We just roll and see what happens. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Heck yeah. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Um, yeah. Uh, I actually, I was thinking, I was like, okay, I went to California a little while ago and I just by happenstance um, we drove past the old church that was that um, Alfred Hitchcock filmed birds Mm -hmm. at and just by happenstance they're like hey look it's a church and they're like yeah that church is it's important and I was like I want to film at that church (laughs) so I think I I think I should get you to write a story and direct it and I'll just like produce it and yeah man we just we just got to go to California for like a week (laughs) (laughs) let's do it man (laughs) um Let's see. Uh, I wanted to ask you, kind of finally, what do you hope the audience gets from this film? Like, what is your heart from it? What is a, 
when it comes out, which we'll we'll make sure we share it, and if you're cool with it, we'll probably bring you back on to just yeah talk about the final product and the editing process and everything. But um, but what is your heart for people when they watch this? What is, what is your intentions of the writer and the director and the vision behind this for the people that are viewing? So the story revolves around a brother and sister who are coming to terms with their abusive father's death, mm-hmm. and I want it to. I, I pulled from a lot of stuff from some friends, like I said, and I just wanted to do justice to their story. I wanted you to be able to watch it and feel for these characters, like what they're feeling, the trauma that they've experienced. And hopefully at the end of it, you just walk away feeling closer to your brother or sister. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that you can make amends with your family, even though maybe they don't deserve it. Maybe you can <laughs> give it yeah. to them anyway. Maybe you can yeah. find it in yourself. And so um, I I really like to make movies like that where, I mean, it's a horror movie, it's dark and it's scary, but on the back end of things, there's a lot of hope and there's a lot of human decency and it's just human stories. And that's what makes things special to me. That's what makes these stories special. That's beautiful. I love that you have a lot of heart that you bring into the horror genre. It's a beautiful thing. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, I really, appreciate you coming on and talking about this um if you think of anything or that you wish you had shared we'll definitely bring you on again uh once the film's out and Mm -hmm. we'll talk about it again or maybe we can talk about previous experiences about learning filmmaking or something (laughs) (laughs) i don't know we'll see but i really appreciate it dustin uh taking time and whatnot so that was the interview with Dustin. Dustin, yes. yes. For some reason, I, I blanked. <laughs> I don't know why. I was thinking of that name the whole time. But um, that's his film. I guess we'll share it once it comes out. Yeah, we'll definitely, we'll definitely share a link to where he has it online when it's finished. But funny story before we close out, I want to tell yeah. you. I, we, were, we were filming Dying of the Leaves. We were working with this guy um, named Justin. He was there on set. And I was calling him Dustin all day. Mm-hmm. And it's because I've worked with this guy before on set and so I just associated the similarity of their name I was just associating this guy who's on set with me as Dustin and I mm-hmm. knew his name was Justin mm-hmm. but I kept calling him Dustin all day and he just wouldn't correct me and he told me at the end of the day he's like yeah you've been calling me Dustin all day <laughs> <laughs> well um, thanks for watching this episode Yeah. Um, this is our episode on YouTube but we also have a audio only version on Spotify. And if you're listening on Spotify, we have a video version of this on YouTube. Yeah, we do. (laughs) Um, So you get to see our beautiful faces. And and Dustin's. Yeah. And so thanks for joining us this episode, and we will see you next time.